So welcome to this new video of my YouTube series Getting Started with Eclipse MicroProfile 3.0. In this video I'm going to cover the MicroProfile Open Tracing Specification. The basic use case for the Open Tracing Specification is to write a distributed tracing mechanism to trace your JAXRS application. So if you have a monolithic application, tracing down a JAXRS call is quite simple. You can add metrics and measure which method took how much time and can really see the bottleneck if there is one. In a distributed system with microservices, this becomes um, more complicated as you often exit your service boundary and enter different ones to fetch data from different services. And for this, we need a mechanic to trace a single flow through all of the services. There are a lot of distributed tracing systems. The most famous one are, I would say, Jaeger and Zipkin. Back then, they all had their own proprietary standard and way of implementing open tracing. But with the open tracing standard, we now have a standardized approach how this distributed tracing should be done. And this is what the MicroProfile Open Tracing specification targets to have this uniform standard of distributed tracing for your application. So this Open Tracing MicroProfile specification comes with two operation modes. The first one is um, without code instrumentation. So at default, all your JAXRS Clients and resources will start a new trace out of the box. The other operation mode would be to, to manually add the add traced annotation to a method call um, to manually start a new span or a full trace if none is there yet. To show you how it works with the first operation mode, so without doing anything and just having a JAXRS application, I've created two small micro profile only microservices. The first one is the bookstore, which I opened here. This bookstore has one public endpoint to retrieve a list of books. Here I hard coded three JSON objects, which are three books and returned by this endpoint. The service also has a price endpoint to retrieve the price for a book. In a real-world application, there would be multiple services involved to gather data, to fetch data and process different business use cases. But for now, it's okay to start with two and have a dedicated endpoint for the price. You see here I'm returning a random price and also I'm adding some randomness um, in the delay. So I'm sleeping here some milliseconds so we can later see really it's not just 100 milliseconds until our use case is over but there's some delay in it. In addition I've created a container request filter. This is part of JAXRS um, and I'm just printing out the, the request header so later on we will see how this open tracing really works under the hood as it adds a lot of HTTP headers to, to work. So this is the bookstore. On the other side I have a bookstore client. This one also has a book resources endpoint. This one is then the public one we will access in the browser. And this fetches the data from a, from our bookstore server here. So I'm using a JAXRS client to fetch the three books and then iterate over the books and for each book I'm fetching the price by its ID. So it's not the, the best implementation here, this could be done in parallel, but we want to actually see something later on in our Zipkin UI as I'm using Zipkin for this example. So that's here, so the price calculator also does a remote call, I'll call the, the rest endpoint here and retrieves uh, the price for the, the book. Here you see the host name is Bookstore. I'm using Docker Compose for the deployment locally so this can be resolved to the actual IP address so you don't have to hard code any IP address here. That's why there is Bookstore. So 
I'm using Open Liberty for the application server. And with Open Liberty, we have to add an extension for which underlying distributed tracing system we use. Here, as I'm using Zipkin, I have to add the Zipkin extension. So this can be downloaded um, at the IBM site. And it's just a jar file uh, containing the logic to work for Zipkin. And this feature, then, as you see it here in my Docker file, I'm adding it to my Docker container at the correct folder. And in my server XML, I'm registering this open tracing feature, Zipkin with this version, and also configure the, the host of the Zipkin server and the port. So this is done in both the bookstore client and in the bookstore. For the deployment, let me show you the Docker Compose file. So this small environment consists of three services. One is the bookstore client with the public ports of the Open Liberty server. Links, uh, it connects to, to Zipkin and bookstore. Bookstore is the other microservice and Zipkin is actually the official Zipkin image we use um, to report our traces and this server will then correlate everything and create a nice UI for us so we can really then trace our method calls and see what was the bottleneck, which call did take, how much second and much more. To start this whole environment locally, you need Docker and Docker Compose. If you cloned it from my GitHub repository, you will get a build and run shell script to both build both applications with Maven and then create the Docker files and in the end bootstrap the whole environment. So let's see. It's now starting to open Liberty servers and the Zipkin server locally. So we need Zipkin to, to report the traces from each application and then correlate everything together. But as you've seen in the application code, I've added no additional annotation um, for open tracing. The only thing you have to do for open liberty is to, to add this extension and configure the access to the distributed tracing system. So either Jaeger or Zipkin or another solution you use. And that's it. So both applications are now up and running. Let's go to a browser and hit the public endpoint of our bookstore client. So you see this takes some time. Also it's the first and the, the, the cold start. And here you see we got three books. You are the hard coded one and all with the random price we added while calling service again. Let's make another call. This was much faster. Then make a third call. There it is. And now we can enter the Zipkin UI. So the Zipkin server comes with a nice user interface to trace down the traces. It's at this port, and then it's just Zipkin. And here we can click on the search icon and now see three results. These are three traces. We see when they were started, we see the duration, how long it took to really complete to get our three books and get the price. And we can then drill down and click on one trace and then get the visual representation of what, what happened in the background in detail. So here we see the boundary level, so all started with our microprofile bookstore client and this then called the bookstore four times. The first call was get available books. So you see here it, it really took quite long. This is so it's a cold start, so everything had to be started in the background. And once we got the books, we fetch the price for each book here in sequence, not in parallel, so we can actually see 
here we're fetching the first price it took about 500 milliseconds the next one and then the last one and this was all remote calls we did for our use case and there's way more metadata you can also see here when it actually started as a server and the finish one which http message was used and also the ip addresses and if we now go go back you see the other ones and if we open them you see here the get available books call was no way faster back then it took about what was it two seconds because of a cold start and here it's just 20 milliseconds and then our prices add up some time as we add some random delay at the top you also get further metadata so you see how many services were involved in this call it were two how nested they were so we had a depth of two how many spans were included so here we have five we have one trace with five spans which were created and then all correlated to this trace id and as i mentioned i've added this filter to the bookstore server to really see what's going on under the hood and let's switch back to the application in the logs and here we see that we are printing out the incoming headers so the normal headers like the host the accept header and different stuff and here at the bottom you also see four new headers these are then the open tracing related headers we need to correlate this call to the the business flow we, we triggered with our browser so this is how it's done in the background and these values alongside their the timestamp and how long it took are then reported to the zipkin server and the zipkin server aggregates everything and gives us this nice ui we see here uh, to really trace down what happened in our system so that's everything i wanted to share with you for the open tracing specification have fun using it mm -hmm.